This is Big Podcast. I'm going to get deep with you. Not really, but something to think about. Halloween is this week. It is the most popular holiday for adults. We're talking billions of dollars. A lot of money is spent on Halloween. And something I just thought about, this might be the reason why, is that we all want to be somebody else. We're hiding. We're not letting our true selves come out. Halloween allows you to be that person, whoever you want to be, or just test some stuff. One night you get to do that thing that you're afraid to do otherwise. Something to think about because you can do it in your podcast. That's how that connects to this episode. This is Build the Big Podcast, the marketing podcast for podcasters. My name is David Hooper. And if you want to grow your podcast, you want to make more people care about your podcast or get more people to care about your podcast, we're not making them do anything. I'm going to tell you how to be skillful. Give them something to care about. Give them something that they'll miss if it's gone. Give them something that they're going to want to tell friends about and bring those friends into the fold. If that's what you want, you're in the right place because that's what we're going to talk about. This is the audio edition of my weekly newsletter. That's called Big Podcast Insider. It goes out via email every Friday morning, New York City time. If you want it, and if you want more information on what I'm talking about, links, additional thoughts that I don't cover here, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. That's where you'll find that. Don't write it down. I'm going to say that a few times throughout this episode. You will have it memorized by the time we are done. This is what we're going to talk about. This will grow your podcast audience for $27. Goldfish, you know those crackers, they're changing its name to Chilean sea bass. What is Podcasting 2.0? A couple of options for you to dig into Podcasting 2.0, see if you like it. How to make your voice sound better in audacity. Trick or treat. The disappearance of an internet domain. Also some classified ads, things that will help you to grow your podcast, get more people to your podcast, make a podcast that people care about, the things that this podcast is about. This episode of Build a Big Podcast is brought to you by Riverside.fm. Studio quality recordings anywhere. And even multi-track recording. You know, some people, I don't know why, they're putting themselves, co-hosts, guests, all on one track. This isn't the 40s, guys. We've got a solution for that. It is called multi-track. It is easier than ever. It does not matter if you have 8, 10, 12 people on one podcast episode. It's an editing nightmare even with Riverside's AI editing tools. <laughs> but you're going to have them on different tracks. So if somebody sneezes, coughs, says something like, what the f***? That you don't want said in your podcast because you're like me. You keep it family friendly. You're going to be able to handle that with Riverside's multi-track recording. If you haven't checked out Riverside lately, you're going to sound like you're in the same room. If you've got two people, there's two rooms. They become one room. 12 people, there's 12 rooms. They become one room. And it's going to sound better than being in the same room because that multi-track recording... There's no bleed through when it's remote. And that's what you get. So if you're in Nashville like me, you want to talk to somebody in Walla Walla, Washington, Chicago, Chunky, Mississippi, New York City, Los Angeles, not a problem. You're going to sound like you're in the same place and you're going to sound great. I want you to try it for free. This is how to do it. Riverside.fm. That is the URL. Go there. Get a free trial. They're going to give you a couple of hours to take a look. Take a listen to yourself. See how you sound. Listen to your guest. How do they sound? Like you're in the same room. That's Riverside.fm. Get the free trial. Two hours. If you want to stick around, I've got a discount code. It's going to get you 15% off. That discount code, Big Podcast, B I G P O D C A S T. That's Riverside.fm. Studio quality recordings anywhere. Riverside.fm, the discount code, Big Podcast, B I G P O D C A S T. All right, let's get to it. You know, I do that live. Never do the same ad twice, never use the same music twice. And if you're wondering, how does he end perfectly when the music is done? post-production, my friends. That's editing. I'm not that good. <laughs> kind of. I mean, I can fake it sometimes, but post-production, that's how to do it. I'm sitting here all alone in my five by eight room, a tricked out walk-in closet, getting everything on tape. That's part of it. Then I go back, I edit, put in the music, put in sound effects like this. That's how you know that I'm going from one thing to the next thing. And when you hear this sound, that's how you know to go to newsletter.bigpodcast.com if you want more information on what I'm talking about, all the links, additional thoughts, photos. It's all there, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Let's get to it. This will grow your podcast audience for $27.
I'm in the middle of a 30-day solo podcast challenge. I started it this week. It is not too late for you to get in with the current group. And you will get 90% off the normal price. For you, 27 bucks. That's it. No catch. It's a training that's going to help you improve your hosting skills, but also clarify your message. You're going to meet podcasters who are serious about getting better together. It is the cheapest way to work with me one-on-one. In fact, it is so inexpensive, $27, that you might find it hard to believe. You think, wait, there's no way David's going to work with me personally for just 27 bucks. Yes, I am. I'm testing out a new system. I want to put as many people through it. As I mentioned, we started it earlier this week. People are loving it. It's a lot of fun too. 30 days of solo podcasting. If you're nervous about it, don't be. You're going to be going through it with other people who are doing the same thing you are, jumping behind the mic, taking chances. It is a safe space for you to experiment. I would love to work with you. You can find more information about it. Get that special link to get the training for 90% off. You will find it at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 204. By the way, if you've got questions about this, do feel free to reach out to me. I'm on Mastodon, I'm on Blue Sky, and I'm on Threads. You can find those links. That's right, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Let's talk about Big Podcast AMP. If you like the newsletter, if you like this podcast, you're going to love Big Podcast AMP Audio Monetization Program. That's what AMP stands for. It's a personal coaching program that's going to help you do three things. One, grow your podcast audience. Two, get people talking about your podcast. And three, make more money with your podcast and podcasting skills. I've got the details at bigpodcast.com slash amp. That's bigpodcast.com slash AMP. Goldfish is changing its name to Chilean sea bass. I'm talking about goldfish crackers, not actual goldfish. I guess it's kind of a bougie snack. They're trying to make it more fancy. That's why they're calling it Chilean sea bass. It is loved by kids. Kids don't know what a cheese it is, but they know what goldfish are. But here's the deal. There are a lot of options for snacks. And there are a lot of cheesy options for snacks. Talking to you, Chester Cheetah. So as a stunt, goldfish, they have changed their name to something more grown up. Chilean sea bass. It's a fun rebrand. And that's the option that you've got for your podcast. That's a great way to get people talking about what it is that you do. Or what kind of crackers you make. We're getting ready to go into the holidays. I mentioned Halloween. We've got Thanksgiving. We've got Christmas and other religious holidays. Diwali is this week. These are all great opportunities for you to have a fun temporary rebrand on your podcast. You know, IHOP, International House of Pancakes. They did a temporary rebrand. They changed the P at the end to B, International House of Burgers. They wanted people to know they have more than pancakes. It got a lot of attention. Probably got them some burger business. I don't count their money. But regardless, a clever thing to get people talking. Could you do it with your podcast? Yes. I've got more thoughts on this in writing. You want to see that Chilean sea bass box? Got it. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. By the way, if you've seen any good or bad rebrands, do reach out to me, Mastodon, Blue Sky, or Threads. I would love to hear about them. If you're doing a rebrand of your podcast, would love to hear about it. Might feature you here and in the newsletter. At where? Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 204. What is podcasting 2.0? There's a lot of hype around podcasting 2.0. Also lots of opinions on it. I'm mentioning this because as a podcaster, I think it's important for you to know about things like podcasting 2.0. At the same time, it's in the very early stages. Do you need to really worry about it? Eh, You know, keep tabs on it. Be aware. The general public has almost no idea that it exists, but you may care about it because there's some big upgrades for podcasts that do podcasting 2.0 like letting listeners leave messages, letting listeners donate money directly to you. I've got a couple of new podcast players. I'm going to talk about them here in a second. If you want to play around with the features and get an idea of how it works, you're going to want to check one of these out. These players, not as slick as a lot of the more developed players, Overcast, Apple Podcast. I use something called RSS Radio, but they are coming along. Eventually, Podcasting 2.0, probably will be accepted by Apple, by Spotify. When that happens, then the tides change. Then more people come on, they find out about it. Again, it's not all bad. You can get paid directly. Listeners can leave messages. RSS, a lot more information can be in the feed. For example, if you're a guest on a podcast or you've got guests, the guests can be tracked via RSS feeds. So it wouldn't be like it is now. 
My guest this week is David Hooper. And I've got alerts for that. Google Alert, Podchaser has alerts. I will know when episodes with me are published. It would be something more specific. My guest is David Hooper of Big Podcast without saying David Hooper of Big Podcast because I'd have a number, a barcode, the mark of the beast, something that would tie everything that I do together, connect it with me, let people who want to hear from me know about it, and also let me know about it. Anyway, if you want more information about this, I've got more thoughts, and I've got some resources linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 204. Podcast 2.0 players. I'm going to talk about a couple of them here. Podverse is one of them. It's a great example of a podcasting 2.0 player. It allows you to share created clips, highlights, playlists, and chapters. You can sync your queue and your history of what you've listened to to multiple devices. You can create backups. You want to send your favorite podcast a donation? You can do that too. It is called Podverse. I've got it linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Fountain. This is one of the more popular podcasting 2.0 players. Fountain allows you to strike up a conversation with podcast hosts, guests, and fans. You can share your thoughts about what you're listening to. You can discover listeners' opinions. I love that. I love the community of podcasting. We're all listening to the same thing because we're interested in the same thing. And these are very niche topics. You're listening to me because you are into podcasting. And you're probably one of those podcasters. You're not just on the fence. You're in it, man. And you love talking about podcasting, thinking about podcasting, making podcasts. Not everybody's like that. What if you could find other people that felt the same way? Well, you can. Podcasting 2.0 puts these communities together for you. Fountain is a great player. It's got an editing tool. You can share an audio clip from a podcast with your followers in seconds. Turn clips into eye-catching videos with subtitles to share on social media. And listeners also get paid. Is it a lot? Probably not. <laughs> Listening to podcasts does not pay a lot. But it does pay something. It's more than free. That might be something that's helpful to your podcast. Side note, I was a member of the Y for years. And they had some kind of reward program. Every time you go to the gym, you get a point, cash in the points, you can get something. I knew a guy at the gym. He was trying to get people to sign up for it. He's like, you got to. It's free money, man. Do it. I said, okay, cool. So I sign up for this program. I get points every time I go to the gym. Completely forgot about it. And I went to that gym about 20 years. I was in there six, maybe seven days a week. A minimum of five days a week for 20 years. Those little points added up. Eventually, this thing goes away. Hey, man, you got to use your points. I said, oh, I got points? Completely forgot about it. I've racked up tons and tons and tons of points, <laughs> which is good because it took tons and tons of points to get what I wanted. I think I got a Norelco razor or something. Very practical. You do something similar like that with Fountain. If you want to link to Fountain, I've got it. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 204. How to make your voice sound better in Audacity. Quick side note. I'm using Audacity 3.7. It was just released today. It is excellent. The modern versions of Audacity are faster. They are better. The plugins work. People say, I don't like Audacity because of destructive editing. Well, they've got non-destructive editing now. So if you can't make a decision, you're good to go. Audacityteam.org for that. 3.7 is out. Let's talk about how to make your voice sound better in Audacity. And this isn't just Audacity, by the way. I'm talking about Audacity because it's the world's most popular recording and editing app, and it's free. But this will work in any DAW, D-A-W, Digital Audio Workstation. And this is the sequence. One, EQ. Two, normalize. Three, compress. Four, normalize. Do it in that order. You're thinking, what the hell is it? All right. I got you, man. I've got full instructions, a video from Mike Russell at Music Radio Creative. You can find it at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 204. Related to this, hey, if you really want to sound good, jump in on this 30-day solo podcast challenge. Again, right now, 27 bucks. It's 90% off. The cheapest way for you to work personally with me. Great sound is not just about how you record yourself, what you do in post-production. It's also about being a competent and confident host behind the mic. So if you're curious about that part, you want to get better at that, I got you covered. That's the 30-Day Solo Podcast Challenge. Again, 90% off right now, just 27 bucks. I've got the link, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 204. Trick or treat. 
True story. Several years ago, I published an episode on April 1st, April Fool's Day. I had taped it during a period a couple weeks before when I'd lost my voice. And I thought, man, this will be a hilarious April Fool's joke. I'll get on there. I'll tell people that I lost my voice. It sounded really weak. Laryngitis. Like, uh, uh. So I recorded an episode. I told listeners that a doctor, an otolaryngologist, ear, nose, and throat doctor, <laughs> got to make it sound real, <laughs> had told me the situation would only get worse and that I was going to be retiring from podcasting. Again, it's April 1st. I thought that people would get the joke. Some may have. Others did not. I got a ton of emails about it. All of them very kind, wishing me well. I actually saw a guy a couple weeks later. <laughs> he didn't hear me say that it was a joke. He's like, man, I'm so glad your voice came back. And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I was because I was embarrassed. Because people cared. And that was a great lesson for me about how much people cared. I talked earlier about being in the five by eight room. Tricked out closet. That's where I record. And I trust, I've been doing this a long time that somebody is going to connect at the other end of this. And you are, so thanks for listening. But you don't know. And you can see numbers on a download chart. Let's say it's 100, 1,000, whatever. If you had 1,000 downloads, you're probably not really thinking about that. But 1,000 people in front of you, yeah, different thing. We are reaching people with our podcast. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking, ah, that'd be a funny joke. Ha, ha, ha. Some people took it really seriously. I want you to consider this if you're frustrated by lack of audience interaction with your podcast. I played this joke. More people than not didn't mention it. Some people really took it seriously. It was enough to where I felt bad. Think about that with your podcast. You might be hearing from just a few people. And if you've ever done any kind of radio, there's some kind of weighted algorithm that they have. Well, for every one caller we get, we consider that 50 people. Every one caller in the middle of the night, we think of that as 20 people, whatever. Things are weighted. We're in the middle of a presidential election in the United States. When they survey people, we surveyed 1,000 people, and all of a sudden, that is what America is, that 1,000 people. They're speaking for America. Focus on the individuals that you're reaching, and focus on the individuals that you're not hearing from, because there are a lot of them. Most listeners are passive. They will never let you know they're listening. I had dinner the other night with a friend of mine. She was talking to me about social media network. And I said, what's your name? I'll follow you. She thought, oh, I'm not registered. I go on there just to read this one guy. That's passive. You would never know she was there. But she's actually mentioned him to me before. So I was thinking, oh man, great topic for the podcast. Another lesson there, always on the lookout. People are listening. You may not always know about them. In fact, you don't always know about them. I'm curious if you've ever had a moment with your podcast where listeners surprised you. If you have, reach out to me. Mastodon, Blue Sky, Threads, let me know. I've got the links. Also a funny meme about this. You know I love to put jokes in these newsletters. That's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 204. The disappearance of an internet domain. Good domains are harder and harder to come by. The .com extension, that's the big one. People ask me, how did you get the domain bigpodcast.com? It wasn't because I was early to the game. I had to buy it on the aftermarket. So I wasn't paying 10, 15 bucks. No. <laughs> but a good domain is worth paying for. With that said, some domains aren't available on the aftermarket. I ran a company called musicmarketing.com for 20 something years. Didn't have the domain the entire time, but I did have the domain a lot of that time. And there was a guy in Canada, musicmarketing.ca. He would email me. Hey man, you want to sell that domain? That's happened a few times. The few domains I've owned. Ironically, when I was ready to sell that domain, I went to him and said, hey, dude, I'm ready to sell. And he's like, yeah, I'll give you $150. Pfft, no, we're not talking like that. It's worth more than that. And that's my point. Good domains are hard to come by. They are worth money and they're getting pricier. So a lot of people, you've probably seen this in software and tech, they're going to the .io extension. All domain extensions mean something. Many are connected to a specific location. Dot .me, that's popular, Montenegro. In Montenegro, they are making a lot of money off the dot .me domains. That's why you see them in all sorts of conferences saying that's the next big thing. Is it? Eh, you know, none of them really compete with dot .com, but dot .io, that's close. It's from the Chagos Islands. Here's the deal, though. The UK government, they're letting go of their control of Chagos Islands. And because of that, 
millions of .io domains are disappearing. I mentioned this here because you should always do what you can to control your online address. It needs to be an online address that you own and realize that you don't really own it. You're renting it. 10 or 15 bucks a year, sometimes a little bit more. I would consider running your RSS feed through a wrapper that is attached to a domain name that you control. Is the domain you control going to be perfect? Mm. Is the domain name you control always going to be under your control? Well, not if there's some kind of change in government or change of the name of the nation. So that's a risk. .com, probably pretty safe. Feedblitz, if you've got a .com domain and you want something like feed.bigpodcast.com, which will get you the feeds for this podcast, that's a good way to do it. I do not want my feed attached to a certain hosting company because you might switch hosting companies. Hosting companies come and go too. That is a very volatile business. It is very competitive. I was at a party for a hosting company last week. I was talking to the boss. This happened to sit by me. Just a stroke of luck. They started... They were maybe 30,000 and the big boy of podcast hosting, media hosting, they were about 80,000. These guys have surpassed them. Those old school podcasting companies. Maybe you've been with one for a while. It might be like the Chagos Islands. Not around next year, have a different name. It's important to control your domain. If you want more thoughts on this, I've got a link to Feedblitz, a tool that will help you to control your domain and control your feeds. Also, a link to the story about the disappearance of an internet domain, the .io extension. That's all at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 204. Classified ads for you. These are things that will help you to grow your podcast, get more people to your podcast, help you make money with your podcast. NoteJoy, it's a great way to simplify your podcast production. It makes podcast production with guests, co-hosts, and producers very easy. It's like Google Docs, but fancier. You type your stuff on your computer, they type their stuff on their computer, their phone, whatever. Anything that you're using, a tablet, they got it. You get all your notes together, boom. Collaboration is done. You get a great episode. It's called NoteJoy. I've been using it for several years. It is a wonderful service. You can find more information about it at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Audio pen. It's the easiest way to convert messy thoughts into clear text, including podcast outlines. You just hit record and start rambling. This is an iPhone app. Hold your phone up to your mouth and talk. I want to talk about this and this. Nope, I don't want to talk about that. Made a mistake. I want to talk about this instead. And this and this and this. Here's the order that I wanted in. One, two, three, four, five. Whoop, take out three. It's that smart. It'll listen to you, transcribe everything, spit out great episode notes and AI any way that you want them. You talk, audio pen does the rest. There's a free trial. I've got a special link for you at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. <music> Hey, thanks for listening to Build a Big Podcast. If you want to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode, this is how to do it. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Three buttons for you, one for iPhone, one for Android, one for RSS. Go there right now. Pick the one you want, that RSS feed, by the way, feed.bigpodcast.com. That is the domain, but the subscribe page, that's bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. When you go there, you can subscribe to Big Podcast and never miss an episode. So do it. Do it right now before you forget bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. While you are on the site, be sure to check out the newsletter right now. As I mentioned, we have just started the 30-day solo podcast challenge. If you want to be a better host, if you want a more compelling message, if you want a podcast that people care about, I'm going to work with you one-on-one to do that. And this is the cheapest way to do that. You're helping me test a new system. I'm going to sit down with you and work with you personally for the next 30 days. That is personally. That is me and you. It is $27. 90% off. You'll find more information about it, the coupon code newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Again, go there right now before you forget. I'll see you on the Solo Podcast Challenge, and I'll see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast. This is the Big Podcast Supercomputer with behind the scenes info for podcasters. The original recording for this episode was 37 minutes and 40 seconds. Approximately 14 minutes of tape, roughly 37% of what was recorded, has been removed.